So we tested the drag coefficient of different sized model cars. And so this is just a little background on the drag coefficient. This is the equation we used and all the variables. Um, and over here we have the drag coefficient of various shapes. So the, uh, the idea with the drag coefficient is that it's constant. So if you've got a shape, no matter what the size is, it's got a constant drag coefficient as long as all the other variables are constant. Um, and what we were testing was if that really holds up when you change the size, um, and we used cars. So we used, we had uh, model cars and we had bigger model cars and we were comparing that to the, to the large real life cars drag coefficient. So these are the equipment that we used. Um, here are all the cars that we used. We had three cars in two different sizes. We had the Corvette Stingray, we had the Aston Martin, and we had the Porsche 911. Um, and these are the items that we used to build our wind tunnel. Wind tunnel. There was no wind tunnel. It's not. This is the setup. So this is the test section of the wind tunnel. It's basically a square or a wooden box that has a acrylic lid so you can see in. Um, here is the well, leaf blower that is sucking air through. Yeah, so the air is flowing this way, it's sucking it in, it's not blowing it towards the back. And so this is a larger setup. You can't, I don't know, if here we've got, yeah, you can uh -oh. see we've got uh -oh. straws. Oh, there they are. Straws lined up to get a laminar airflow in a moment. And here's the force sensor that had a uh, strain going through the straws and connected on the bottom of the car oh. so that we could get a uh, wind force on the car. And we, we had a, you can't see it in the picture because we hadn't done yet, but we had a little slot cut out on the acrylic, oh dear, on the uh, acrylic sheet to, so we could stick a wind kind of speed, what's it called, tachometer? Anim anemometer. A speed, a wind speed meter down in, we'll see what the, what the wind speed was. So we conducted the experiment by putting the car in the wind tunnel and then hooking up the force sensor and then turning on the leaf blower. We recorded the speed of the wind and then we recorded the force the car was um, undergoing. And then we used those two values to find the drag coefficient. And to find the surface area of the car or the uh, area that is being hit by the wind, we took a picture of the car and then used Logger Pro's image analysis to uh, get the area of the front of the car. Yeah, you can just take a picture and do graphical analysis on it, like we've done before, and you can just take the, the integral kind of thing, and it, and it does it. It's, it's, really, it's really nice. So here's our data. The bottom line, the bottom corner, is the average of the drag coefficients that we got. And um, the next slide has our error, I think. No, this is just a smaller table of them. So some sources of error was the wind tunnel. Um, the leaf blower is very turbulent, we found out, and does not give a nice, steady airflow. Um, we also found that the wind tunnel itself had some turbulence because the cars were so big that the air coming off the car would um, bounce off the walls and affect the data. That uh, happened with the large cars. Um, there's not enough space in between the wall and the car um, because there's turbulence in the walls. If the air flows over the wall, it's kind of a rough surface and there's just stuff in the way. And that, like, ha there's a buffer area you need to get out of that turbulence. And the, the larger cars actually um, infringed on that a bit. And we had a lot a lot more air with the larger cars, which surprised us, because we thought we'd just kind of get more consistent numbers, because, you know, bigger numbers. Um, but we actually got uh, better numbers with the, the small cars. So here is our uh, error. As you can see, the bigger cars were consistently uh, had more air than the smaller ones. So in conclusion, wind tunnels are hard to make work. We actually went through three different um, wind tunnel styles using the one that the physics department supplied, which didn't work. And then we used one that had two box fans, which didn't work. And so then we used a leaf blower and that kind of worked. The problem with the wind tunnel was actually getting the wind speed high enough. Um, we tried using fans and stuff, and it just takes a lot of speed to generate just a little bit of force because the cars are so small. Um, we actually made the tunnel smaller. We put uh, board liners in for the little car. I think we had a over 20 meters per second, wasn't it? It was pretty fast. Oh, and... Uh, 
we still believe that our results, uh, despite our results, we still believe that the cars would be accurate if we had a more ideal wind tunnel. Because as you can see, the smaller cars were pretty close to the uh, actual drag coefficient. Uh, we did error against the actual values. So these are the actual values yeah. of the life size car. Um, it was really hard to find error uh, a value for the Corvette convertible. Because um, uh, Chevy publishes the drag coefficient, but they publish the one of their their fanciest car. It's the best, and they don't they pu they don't publish it for the Corvette with the top down. And it was really hard to find any any because we found a lot of different different values for that. Um, we didn't actually mean to do a Corvette. That was a surprise. We ordered a Corvette, and it came convertible, which they hadn't told us on Amazon. And we had the Corvette, do you have the car? I do. We had the Corvette, and so we had to make it, we had to make it convertible. So we had to so you could, you could take a drum around. and cut the roof off. <laughs> yeah, so, so I cut, I made it convertible. So that might be another source of error. It's actually not convertible, it's just open top, I guess. It doesn't convert. <laughs> There's no going back. <laughs> neither, <laughs> neither, does the, neither does the other model. It doesn't okay. call it convertible. <laughs> So this could be done in real life with an angle grinder, I guess. Uh, Top Gear did that with a minivan. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Thank you, guys. I'm sure there are some questions. Yes. Why did you do this lab? We wanted to build a wind tunnel. All right. <laughs> That's cool. Madeline? Would this influence, um, if you decide to buy a car, will uh, this data influence your decision? No, because Priuses are terrible. <laughs> Priuses have the best drag coefficient of oh, like, production oh, cars. Production car. The Volkswagen, Volkswagen makes a supercar that gets 200 miles a gallon that actually is the lowest. It's like, it's like 19. Or, is it? What's the, I don't know. It's very low. I forget what the number is. Um, but not really. That's an interesting question. Uh, how much of an issue is drag on an ordinary car? And, and can you talk about how that is affected by speed? You were talking about more force at higher speed. It seems like you guys have some more background knowledge. Can you give that to us? Like how much it affects how fast you can go for power? Yeah, or uh, fuel efficiency, right? Is that why one would buy a Prius, right? Because of its slow drag yeah, coefficient? Um, people buy Priuses for a lot of reasons I don't understand. Um, I have a long rant about Priuses that I'm really trying not to get into. Um, you should tell us. Yes. YouTube wants to know. YouTube the camera <laughs> is rolling. No, right. right. The they're parents. slow, they're ugly, they're terrible for the environment. Lithium mining is awful. Battery, it's, ba it's bad. They're bad. <laughs> they're <terrible cars>. Got them! <laughs> They're worse for the environment than a normal sedan. It, it, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so size. Can anyway, drag co the problem with the cars, drag coefficient really only matters at high speeds, and at high speeds is you don't have downforce, which is something else we wanted to study but didn't have the, the time or resources. Now, you need downforce to not fly off the road and kind of flip over at 200 miles an hour. So that, that so downforce is... That's what yeah. it, you can... The cars with wings in the back, the spoilers that stick up, that actually, that's an upside down wing that instead of throwing air down to create lift, throws air up to create opposite lift, to keep the car on the ground. And it, the way that's measured is just the car weighing more. And it slows it down, but it also keeps it on the ground and it has traction. And basically, uh, aerodynamic design on, on race cars and cars that are meant to go fast is trying to compromise between drag coefficient and downforce trying to maximize downforce, but also um, minimize drag, which is kind of contradictory. So it's an interesting engineering challenge. Awesome. Thanks so much.